When we talked about color, I said that each of the values that we use to specify a color, either red, green, blue, or hue, saturation, and brightness, was given as a number between 0 and 255. Now, you are probably wondering to yourself, where the heck does 255 come from? What a weird number. Well, this number comes to us partly from history. It's the same reason we have 16 ounces in a pound or 5,280 feet in a mile. It's a number that really made sense once, <laughs> but has persisted. And in the case of 255, it actually still makes good sense. So... Let's take a look at that. Where does 255 come from? Well, it's related to 256. It turns out that in a single piece of computer memory called a byte, just a single chunk of memory, you can store 256 different values. So, okay, why aren't they in the numbers 1 to 256? And it's because we really like in the computer to often count starting at zero because we want to be able to say we have zero things. If, if I have an apple, then I have one apple. And if somebody buys it from me, I now have zero apples. And so I want to be able to represent the number zero. So in computers, we often start counting at zero. So if someone says, what are the first four numbers, the first four integers available in the computer? You say, well, the first number is zero, then one, two, and three, and those are the first four numbers. So if you want to store four numbers, you can store zero to three. Suppose someone asked you for the first eight numbers. Well, it's the same thing. We start with zero, and then we just keep adding numbers until we have eight of them. And in this case, we get zero to seven. Those are the first eight numbers. Well, remember I said in one byte of memory, one chunk of memory, we can store 256 numbers. Well, if we start at zero and then we add one and add another one and we just keep counting our way up, that means we get the numbers zero to 255. And that gives us 256 numbers. And the numbers zero to 255 are just perfect to store in one byte. Now, what's a byte? You've, you may have heard this word. A byte is a single chunk of memory in the computer. Now, if you buy a USB drive today, you might go out and buy yourself an eight gigabyte USB drive. So here's an eight gigabyte USB drive stuck into a cork. Eight gigabytes means eight billion bytes. That's billion with a B. <laughs> Now, just to get a feeling for how big this number is, in the same way that a molecule is made up out of atoms, or a brick wall is made up out of bricks, a byte is made up out of bits. To make one byte, you combine eight bits. And that's as far down as it goes. The bit is a basic unit. It's the thing that stores a zero or a one. Take eight bits, put them together, you get a byte. Now, bits actually started out as real big physical things. Here is a picture of something called a core memory. Each one of those little black donuts is called a core, and it's a little magnet. When you run electricity through the wires, you can see vertical, horizontal, and diagonal wires. When you run information through the wires, it causes the little magnetic donut to flip from one orientation to another. And if it's flipped one way, it means a zero. If it flips the other way, it means a one. Now, these things were stitched together by hand. <laughs> they were woven like a rug by people with needles and tweezers. And every single bit was precious. Because you had to make these little donuts and you had to make the little wires and you actually had to build this thing. Now, remember, it takes eight of these little donuts to make one Bite. So eventually people got better at it and they got better at making smaller and smaller donuts and they were making little circuit cards that looked like this. So in this white square, there are a hundred little donuts. And so that's something like 13 bytes. Now remember your USB drive is going to be like 8 billion of them. But on here, there are 13 not even 13,000, just 13, <laughs> 13 bytes. 
Now, people got better and better at building machines that could that could weave these memories together. And so here's a picture of a pretty big core memory board. But still, if you had a microscope and you zoomed in on that, you would see just gajillions of these tiny little magnetic cores. Now, you might think this is all interesting from a historical perspective, but, I mean, you know how fast you can run through a gigabyte of storage. You can do that in no time. Who could have used, you know, 13 bytes? What good could that have been? Even 10,000 bytes. It's just not enough to do anything. Well, it turns out it is. The Apollo space program did something amazing. They took a rocket, (laughs) they launched it from the Earth. It went into space with three men inside. And this picture shows the command module and the lunar excursion module connected. Once this thing was up in space, they went around the Earth a few times, and then they traveled to the moon. They circled the moon, the lunar module separated from the command module, went down to the moon, and guys got out and walked around in the moon. Then they got back into the lunar module, blasted off, reconnected with the command module, flew back to the planet Earth, and splashed down. And they did all of this with 60,000 bytes of memory. We often say 60K, where K stands for kilo, like kilogram is 1,000 grams. So 60K bytes is 60,000 bytes. So how much is 60K? Well, if you listen to a typical MP3 song, that's about 5 megabytes. On my disc, the average MP3 song seems to be about 5 megabytes. 60K then works out to be about three seconds. Here's a piece of music in MP3 format that represents the totality of all the computer memory involved in the Apollo spacecraft from the moment it launched to the moment it landed back in the ocean. That's it. If they had stored that little piece of music compressed in MP3 format on the Apollo spacecraft, they would have required every single bit of memory on the entire spaceship. Amazing. Here's a picture of the actual Apollo 11 memory. This was the stuff that went to the moon. I mean, again, this was stitched together like a rug. So every bit was precious. Every bite was precious. You didn't use two if you could have used one. So here's a typical picture, and I'm now going to identify just how much of this you can store in 60K. What's inside that little red square? That little piece of this one picture is the totality of the memory available to land men on the moon and bring them home safely. It's incredible, but that's how precious memory was. And so nobody was willing to waste a single piece of it. To give you just one last example, here's a picture of Camp Nou. This is the home of FB Barcelona. It's a soccer stadium, and it holds just under 100,000 people. Now, if we take this stadium, the population of this stadium, to be one gigabyte, Not even the 16 gigabytes that we saw before stuck into a cork. Just a lousy one gigabyte, the sort of thing that people give away for free at trade shows. Oh, heck, you know, in a couple years, you'll have a gigabyte in your sneaker. If we treat the entire population of this stadium as one gigabyte, the Apollo 11 spacecraft represents one person. It's mind-boggling that they were able to do this. So... Bytes were precious. Well, they were also precious when computer graphics was being invented. And people said, how many bytes do we need to represent a color? And as always, the fewer, the better. And they found over time that one byte for red, green, and blue was just about enough. Now, it really isn't enough. When you go to see a movie and there are digital special effects, they are not computing those effects with one byte per color channel. One byte for red, one for green, one for blue. They might be using two bytes, which today is like nothing. But it's actually enough to do a really beautiful job. 
If you've seen the video on transparency, then you know that in addition to red, green, and blue, or hue, saturation, and brightness, you can also give a value for transparency. And that also is a number between 0 and 255. And that also can be stored as one byte. Let's see what 255 steps of color looks like. So here's a grid of red values where I'm just marching left to right, top to bottom. So the values from 0 to 15 are on the top row, and then 16 through 31 are in the next row. In fact, I'll turn on the numbers so you can see the value. This is the brightness in red of each square, and I have green and blue turned off completely. So 0 is in the upper left, 255 is in the bottom right, and as we work our way left, right, top down, just like reading a book, the colors get brighter and brighter. So I'll turn the numbers off again, and you can see it looks pretty smooth, and particularly with the video compression, and if you're looking at this on a small screen, it should look quite smooth indeed. Now, if we look at the greens, depending on the system you're looking at, how the video is getting compressed and all of that, you may be able to see very small steps between the squares. Let me turn the numbers on so you can see where the squares are. And if you look around, say, 55 and 56, you may see a vertical line. You may actually see the edge between those squares. If you don't, that's because everything's being smoothed out a little bit. Um, and that's why one byte is just about enough. But we're very sensitive to changes in green. And sometimes you can actually see those little differences. If we look at the blue colors, our eye is much less sensitive to blue. And so probably everything here looks nice and smooth. And if we look at the grays, well, there's the numbers from black to white. And let's actually put the numbers themselves up there so you can see we have black in the upper left, increasingly bright values of gray until we have 255 in the bottom right. And this is a 16 by 16 grid. 16 times 16 is 256. And so we have 256 numbers. That means the numbers from 0 to 255. And that's why the color components are all numbers between 0 and 255. It's because bytes were precious and people used as few of them as possible. And they found that one byte per color channel was just about good enough. And that meant 256 values, and that meant values from 0 to 255.